Hi, so in this video I'll be going over the pros and cons of a command economy. So in the previous video we looked at the pros and cons of a free market economy and so the actual pros and cons for a command economy are sort of going to be the opposite in this in this video because we can think of command economies and free market economies of as being different or being complete opposites to at least some extent. So first we need to just establish what we mean by a command economy and that's what I've got here where we're just thinking of a government dictating everything about how to allocate resources in this economy. We aren't using markets and the price mechanism. We just have a centralized government that is going to decide exactly where we allocate resources, what goods we produce and Basically, yeah, just they are in command of the economy. That's why we call it a command economy. And we do have a couple of examples in history. We can think of the USSR in the past as being more of a command economy and in the present, maybe North Korea as a command economy, although they are quite rare to this day. And as I said in the previous video, we tend to see mixed economies more often, which have a public and a private sector, not just a public sector or just a private sector. But so we can think about the benefits of having a command economy to begin with. And as I say, these are sort of the inverse of the drawbacks of a free market economy to some extent. But so the first of these is going to be that we tend to have low inequality in these economies. We don't have business owners making billions and billions and then uh, people that just can't get a job at all living in poverty. We tend to see distributive qualities in these command economies where we have people of many different professions earning similar wages. And even if we did have wage inequality, we'd have high levels of redistribution through income taxes and so on. And this low inequality sort of links into the second point we have here, which says that we have, because we have a centralized commanding social planner, they can make choices to maximize the welfare of society as a whole. And so these choices that the centralized social planner makes well, they will tend to lead to low inequality because in a command economy, we view inequality as being a bad thing and that to maximize social welfare, we want to have people generally having very similar levels of wealth. And this is a property of our utility functions that I won't get into. But as we look more deeply into economics, we will see from the fact that we have diminishing returns to a utility we will tend to see that a social planner will want to reduce inequality where possible. And on top of this, the this centralized social planner can make a number of choices to provision markets that will offer positive externalities. And this sort of ties in again to the third point here that we have fewer market failures. And we said in a free market economy, we would tend to have uh, monopolies, uh, pollution and native externalities in production and we might have missing markets for example healthcare and education we may not have these fully provisioned because they don't offer profits well we don't really have this problem in a command economy because this social planner is the one that's making the decisions we don't rely on there being a profit that can be made from a certain good being provisioned we just need the government to be willing to supply it and they will choose to provide what benefits society or at least we hope that that's what they'll choose to provide and so we'll tend to see fewer market failures. Now these benefits do tend to rest on the assumption that the social planner does make choices that maximize the welfare of society but in a command economy it is only true that we can have a social planner that makes these choices. And in reality, we may have a social planner that is just looking to, say, extract rents for itself or to help out large businesses, or they simply don't have the information to make these good choices. And this is and these points sort of tie in to the problems of a command economy. So one of these comes from inefficiency. We 
discussed with the free market economy that we have a profit motive so uh, firms or individuals seeking to make profits are going to innovate they're going to cut their costs down so they can maximize profits and they're going to come up with new ideas and this links into the less innovation point that follows it and we don't have these natural incentives that we have in a free market economy we don't have any reason for individuals to push to reduce their costs and to maximize their profits and we don't really have a reason for individuals to come up with new ideas like electric cars or invent the telephone for example because even if they make these profits they're going to be taxed away from them and redistributed and and really just be spread out so that we don't have inequality and so the trade-off of inequality tends to be this inefficiency that if we have inequality it gives an incentive for people to innovate so these are two big issues with a command economy that we don't have these economic incentives that we think of when we think of free market economies the third point is that we tend to have reduced choice because we have one social planner in the government that is going to dictate which goods and services we produce and if we have one or one government that is coming up with what we should provide in an economy they're not going to tend to create lots of different brands and come up with lots of choice for people because you say okay we need to produce cars they might produce one type of car they're not going to produce all the different brands of cars that we see in more free market and more mixed economies because there's no reason for them to invest in coming up with all these different brands when it could just produce one type of car and this is going to damage consumer utility because people only have one possible choice of car so their own preferences aren't really taken into account where the government is likely to just produce one middle of the road line that sort of fits everyone's needs but you don't get any differentiation that individuals can choose on based on their own preferences and so the fourth point is perhaps the most important point is that we tend to see poor decision making in command economies now the issue is that we have if we say we have one government and we group together the one government that is making just a huge number of decisions they're allocating all resources an infinitely many number of decisions we might say uh, the problem with this is that this centralized government does not necessarily have the expertise in all these infinitely many different departments different sectors of the economy because it's just one centralized role when we have a free market economy we have lots of decentralized industries where individual businesses are experts in their field and they know exactly what the consumer wants and they're going to produce exactly what the consumer wants they're going to tailor their customer service given their years of expertise and so on but when we have a government making all the decisions they do not have this level of expertise or they don't tend to they they may know a thing or two and these government departments are somewhat specialized but when we don't have the free market making decisions we don't have a price mechanism we don't have a profit motive over time we tend to make poor decisions that lead back into this lack of efficiency they reduce our innovation and they reduce choice in turn and over time we tend to see that command economies get very wasteful because we don't have a price mechanism or any natural individual uh, decision making that drives us back to our efficiency in the economy and eventually we tend to see lots of wastefulness so as we see there are key problems with both the command economy and the free market economy and this is why we tend to have mixed economies that correct some of these problems uh, we may not get the full extent of the benefits of these uh, very extreme types of economies but we tend to see that getting rid of these key issues that can really reduce social welfare is beneficial so a mixed economy tends to be the way to go and it's less risky really than having one or the other of these two economies that i've made videos on so that will wrap up this video please do leave a like if it was at all useful do check out the playlist for future videos and the past video on free market economies and do subscribe for future economics videos